so the the topic uh, I was I was or the focus I was uh, asked to to talk about is uh, how uh, internationalization is also having an impact on our doctoral training and our doctoral studies. Um, as uh, as Nadia said, uh, in the cooperation unit, we are uh, helping with the uh, joint co the joint PhD degrees, and uh, it is it is a part of the the doctoral level of, of international cooperation that that uh, we are working on uh, specifically. Uh, and I wanted to uh, maybe have a, uh, a focus dealing on on different aspects of internationalization of the doctoral training uh, and the doctoral studies because there are many factors that are uh, entering into effect and are that are uh, influencing the way we are organizing this uh, this, this doctoral training um, so namely I, I will mention uh, these these four points uh, First, uh, internationalization of, of doctoral training as, a, as the ac academic aspect of globalization. Uh, we are working in a framework where there's increased mobility of students, uh, even though we just uh, went through and we're still going through uh, the, the COVID-19 uh, uh, period. Uh, we were before that and, and, and hopefully after that we were in the middle of a great increase of mobility of students across the world. And of course, it has an impact on the uh, uh, doctoral education. Um, another aspect is the rise of European program uh, and the funding that they offer, uh, because this funding, of course, uh, allows for more students and more doctoral students to move and go uh, get trained uh, with different partners. Um, the third point is uh, through these programs also the, uh, the promotion of European quality indicators uh, because of this framework I will get more into detail uh, later on and, and we will finish with um, focus even more closer to what, uh, what, uh, how, how this translates in France and in the uh, in University of Montpellier. So uh, just before COVID-19 happened, uh, we noticed that there was an increased uh, international mobil student mobility across the world. Uh, it's not just in Europe, it's not just between such and such parts, it's really a global uh, uh, process. And uh, thanks to statistics that uh, were gathered by uh, the Campus France institutions, uh, we can see here that 5.6 million students were uh, uh, in degree-seeking mobility in 2018, and uh, the the the, um, the evolution was an increase of 31 percent over the, the five previous years. So that's the context. Of course, uh, since uh, COVID-19 happened, we have seen a, a decrease in this mobility, uh, but it's it seems like uh, the 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 will of students to go abroad and get trained is still very valid and still very uh, act uh, active. So Jean it seems to me that we will go there. Yes. Just a second. You are not you are not uh, moving your slides. Oh, you're not seeing the slides as they move. It's it's always the first one. Okay, yeah. I'll change maybe. Thank you for uh, letting me know. Let's see if I get out of the. Uh, I need to get out of the, the visio. Can you see here the different slides? Yeah, so I'll, I'll just stay with this, uh, this view. Uh, sorry, so this is the evolution uh, I was mentioning here. So obviously you see the, uh, the, the rising number of, of uh, international mobility and, uh, and the increase, namely 31% over five years. Um, in, in different countries, COVID-19 has, has had a different impact. Uh, the, for example, in the US, uh, they uh, assess the impact uh, to about uh, decrease in 40%. Uh, in France, uh, thanks to, uh, in part, the, uh, the, the, the policy Bienvenue en France, the Welcome to France, which was maintained uh, by, the, by the ministry and by the universities, uh, it seems that France has uh, undergone a, a, a smaller impact 
uh, estimations uh, say 25% less uh, of uh, incoming uh, uh, international students. Uh, I guess we need uh, a bit more time to uh, really assess the proper statistics and, and have a, a bit more of a perspective over, over these figures. But uh, to go and to talk about the general context, uh, uh, it seems like have all the actors and all the all the programs were helping with increasing this this uh, mobility, um, especially at the European level. Uh, the European Commission has really uh, started to uh, uh, implement uh, uh, structures and programs to to uh, facilitate these mobilities. So the Bologna process with the bachelor, master, uh, and doctorate started in 1999. Uh, there is also the uh, uh, creation or promotion of European higher education area and the European research area in, at, at the end of the uh, century as well. Um, the tools to help with the mobilities for students, for researchers and for PhD students have also uh, gained strength. Uh, there was a, a previous network called ERAMOR which was uh, uh, dedicated to helping, you know, uh, uh, international students moving from one country to the other. And it was uh, developed uh, to the EURACCESS initiative and EURACCESS not only deals with mobility within Europe, but also has uh, hubs in various parts of the world. And obviously we have the chance and, and uh, this project is also uh, one more illustration of uh, the support that we received from the Erasmus program. So Erasmus with its great diversity from the mobility of individual students to projects and to um, various kinds of, of uh, cooperation. Um, of course, we've all heard about the, 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 the growing importance or the growing uh, impact in the media, at least of the Shanghai ranking, the Times Higher Education ranking for the uh, assessment of universities. So uh, even though in the past, uh, these, these elements were not really taken into account or were not, did not get the importance that they have today. And uh, to give more concrete uh, elements, uh, I will just give you this, this, uh, this information. If you look at Erasmus+, uh, they moved from about 15 billion euros to uh, more than 26 billion euros over the same seven, uh, seven year period. So it shows the really the increase uh, of um, uh, facilitation for the, for the uh, student mobility at every level. Uh, if you look more about the, the PhD level, uh, precisely uh, the Marie Curie, uh, Marie Skodowska Curie actions uh, who are also a big tool of promotion of, of uh, internationalization of the PhD programs and the PhD uh, studies. So um, uh, since 1996, they've been investing in a lot of money and still today, since 6.6 .6 billion euros are going to benefit about 65,000 researchers and 25,000 PhDs across Europe. Uh, so they will receive uh, funding support for this mobility. So you can see that there is the, uh, the globalization aspect, the, 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 the increase of mobility of people, and of course, the increase of mobility of students and PhD students. And in, in parallel to that, you have the, uh, the, the structuring of, of programs uh, that gives and facilitate uh, the funding for such mobilities. With these programs, uh, we also receive uh, 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 advice and, and uh, sometimes recommendations from the European Commission on how to uh, implement quality indicators that become uh, common quality indicators all over Europe. Uh, it, it remains uh, uh, applied uh, quite differently from one university, from one country to the other, even in Europe. But it's still very important that these guidelines were published and, and these recommendations are shared with all the actors. So um, we think about the, especially the uh, focus on the transversal skills for PhD students uh, to improve their employment opportunities because we realize that most of them will not get uh, jobs within, uh, as a professor at least, 
uh, at the university. So they we need to to strengthen their trans transversal skills so that they they can be competitive in uh, other markets. And uh, so we we learned that, and the recommendations came through the Marie Skłodowska Career Action uh, Quality Standards, uh, because if you want to get the funding, you have to uh, uh, engage and and uh, and uh, apply the, the standards offered by this this program. Um, the universe, the European University Association also published. Uh, a couple of, uh, of um, recommendations, uh, namely the Salzburg principles um, that were accompanying the uh, the creation of uh, the Bologna process, basically, and uh, to help uh, European universities uh, accept common principles of, of quality education for doctoral students. And of course, the, the European Commission also uh, published uh, uh, very interesting um, uh, recommendation on the seven principles of innovative doctoral training. So again, uh, a recommendation by the European Commission to help uh, all the actors, all the academic actors to uh, include this international element to the training of uh, doctoral students. I'll uh, finish with a focus on, on France and Montpellier. Uh, so Campus France, as you know, is the the big operator from the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and they have been very active in promoting uh, French higher education abroad through the program Bienvenue en France. Uh, as I said in my introduction, it helps um, maybe reduce the impact of COVID-19 in France in terms of um, welcoming international students. And uh, based on one of the publications by Campus France, I can give you an uh, an overview of uh, where uh, international PhD students in France come from. So we have about 41% of uh, the PhD students in French universities who are international students. And you can see here uh, the countries of origin. So first, uh, China for obvious demographic reasons. Uh, and also for it, it, it translates the, uh, the increase of uh, of cooperation with uh, our Chinese partners. Um, um, some European partners uh, are neighbors, uh, mainly Italy and Spain, uh, uh, are two, two countries uh, that send us lots of, uh, of uh, PhD students. And then you have uh, many uh, students, uh, many uh, countries, sorry, uh, that have strong links uh, with France uh, uh, over uh, history and over the uh, the building of their own uh, higher education systems and of course because of the language uh, factors so we receive many uh, PhD students from Algeria from Tunisia from Morocco um, even though the recent uh, there are recent trends uh, that are a bit changing uh, uh, because France is facing uh, competition from uh, uh, the Gulf countries who are offering now very good positions for uh, people who also with uh, Arabic language. And uh, the increase also of other uh, Asian uh, academic powers, uh, namely India, which is uh, progressing at a very high rate. You see a plus 37% uh, in terms of Indian PhD students uh, accepted in France over a five year period. And, uh, and uh, yeah, that's, that's the main uh, aspect I wanted to, to show. Um, if you look at Montpellier uh, in particular, uh, we, we uh, see the, about the same balance. Uh, out of the 1,800 uh, PhD students that are uh, registered in our uh, statistical tools, uh, about, eight, about 1,100 are French. And you can see the same uh, countries of origin for uh, for our um, PhD students here in Montpellier with lots. Uh, so the main group is the Lebanese and then uh, PhD students from Algeria, because we also had uh, special programs to uh, to train uh, PhD uh, 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 students from Algeria in, in an agreement with the, the Ministry of uh, Higher Education. There, uh, as I said, our neighbors uh, from Italy and from Spain are well represented. 
and then also uh, colleagues from uh, Morocco and China and India. And uh, I see, I'll, I'll leave you with uh, with the document to to have a glimpse of uh, how it impacts and how it translates to our doctoral schools in the University of Montpellier. I thank you for your attention and 